Let's praise and glorify the Lord. I ha have some scriptures to read to you in just a moment. Uh, if, if you would like to turn in your Bible or get your phone set, however you wor uh, work with it, uh, I have a scripture in Luke, the 17th chapter, and the uh, uh, 32nd verse is what we'll be reading from this morning. Luke 17. Praise God. Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. Would you stand for the reading of the Lord's word just to honor him? Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Thank you for your faithfulness and thanks for our men working on the air conditioning. Right During the service, we praise God for help from the Lord and for our uh, brethren. Thanks to all that have worked this week. Thanks for the uh, volunteer workers in the food pantry and all the uh, laborers that have labored in the uh, the field outside and everything's been done. Thank you so much. God bless you. Looking to Luke 17 and uh, uh, to the 32nd verse. Jesus is speaking. He said, remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, help us to realize that Jesus was speaking to a group of people when he said this. Lord, and to his disciples as they were standing there. We ask now, God, that you'd help us, that we'd listen to your voice and do all that is pleasing in your sight. We ask your blessings now, O oh God, and deliver us, we pray, that we may receive the word, the engrafted word, and God, help us to do what it is uh, on our plate to do today in this world that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Get ready, because the Lord is coming. He's coming again. It's something we ought to be prepared for every day. The words of Jesus years, years ago said, Remember Lot's wife. Uh, this was 2,000 two years ago. Uh, it, it was for them, and it's for us today. We, uh, he, this is the only woman that he drew out uh, that I remember right off the top of my head that uh, he made mention of. Uh, specifically like this. And why would he say that? Remember Lot's wife. Now, uh, if you are, as Brother Ray was talking about uh, not knowing the history of the Bible, let me fill you in just a little bit about Lot and uh, Abraham. Abraham uh, uh, was in the Urchaldes, and he was called out to go to uh, Canaan of, uh, and to Canaan. And he took with him a young man, I, I don't know his age exactly, but his name was Lot. And uh, he, he brought his family along. And uh, now, by the way, uh, neither one of these fellows were poor. They were some of the richest in the entire world. For uh, 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 People have looked back, and specialists that have looked in the Bible. Uh, uh, Lot and Abraham, uh, we would say today, was filthy rich. They, they had everything you could imagine. Uh, their uh, sh sheep and flocks uh, uh, reached out across the land. And they went over uh, into the uh, uh, settlement in the hills of Beth Bethel. And there was a good place to live. This was great. Uh, and uh, after a while, Lot and Abraham got looking and said, Our cattle's too much. We got to split up. Uh, something's got to happen. And Abraham said to Lot, which place do you want? You want this off here on this side or over here? And, uh, of course, Lot chose the best place. He, he got uh, over near Sodom and Gomorrah. That was a rich, uh, well-watered land and lots of grass, and it was good for the cattle. And he went over there, and he found him a place in the city. Uh, he wasn't a, uh, apparently not a tent dweller anymore. He became uh, uptown, and he got along with the people pretty good. Uh, but his family apparently got along a lot better than he did. And uh, uh, Lot's wife and children uh, looked upon the city uh, uh, very precious. But the Lord looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah and said, That place is wicked. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to tear it up and blow it away. Uh, he may not have said it in those terms, but that's the way we'd see it today. Uh, when you th think about a, a hurricane or a tornado, tornado but it, he's going to burn the place up completely. And... Uh, as we think about it today, uh, God spoke to Abraham and said, uh, 
I'm going to destroy the place. And the Lord said, uh, Abraham said to the Lord, said, would you spare it if you could find 50 people? And I guess the Lord agreed because then he said, Lord, would you spare it if you could find 40? Uh, and the uh, Lord agreed with that. And apparently Abraham got to thinking, I only know a few people over there. Lord, would you spare it for 10 people? And he couldn't find 10 people. And he told Abraham, it's going to be destroyed. You better tell Lot about this. And uh, the angels came to Lot and was at his door. And uh, he invited them in and was, uh, stayed with them the night. But the uh, wicked of the outside wanted them to send out these new men to them. And he refused. He said, you can have my daughters, but you can't have these men. He, was, he knew they were angels, uh, but... Uh, he did not send out either one of them. And in the morning, when it was time for them to leave, uh, they, the angels and a lot knew that this place was going to be destroyed. And the angel of the Lord told them, now, when you go, don't look back. And as they took off to leave, they, uh, somewhere out down the road or up, going up the hill, Lot's wife looked back. And what happened to her? She turned to salt immediately, just like that. You say, well, that was a quick judgment. Don't quick judge the word of the Lord because it's an example for us today. And Jesus used it in his uh, uh, speech on this particular occasion. He said, you remember Lot's wife, what she did. Why did this happen? Let me uh, encourage you to look at this scripture uh, pretty closely again. Here, he, she had lived down in this place and she apparently put everything into it. And today, everything is going to be wiped out. A lot of you ladies would probably look back at your house. I want to look back. You knew it was going to blow away or going to be crushed today. It might be. You never can tell. <coughs> and as you know, it's around, the, if you've lived here very long, I, I've been here since 50 in this area, 1950, off and on. There used to be signs all up and down the road. It's evacuation route. How many seen an evacuation route recently? You've seen one recently? Yeah, a, a few, they're still out there. But they used to be everywhere, up and down the side streets in some places. Evacuation route was this direction. Well, uh, most of the folks over at uh, uh, the uh, field here where the airport is and so on, they know that no use of saying evacuation route because you're not going to leave. You're going to be blown away completely. You haven't got a chance, friend. Anywhere within 15 to 20 miles is going to be ash. If somebody puts a 20 megaton bomb here, an atomic bomb will e completely evacuate the place in just a moment. So we need to be looking that this destruction could come to us. I didn't say it was coming. I'm just telling you it could. Because uh, I heard the other day that there are at least five countries that have big bombs now. Besides us. That's scary, isn't it? But let me encourage you to do what Jesus said. Remember Lot's wife. Don't look back to what was going on yesterday. Let's look forward to what Jesus said for us. And you know, the New Testament tells us to look up. To look forward. We we don't want to look back what was going on yesterday, what was going on. That Some things you've got to reconcile what happened yesterday. Yes, that's true. But I want you to realize we don't need to live in the past. We need to live in the now and look for the future. Amen? A man is made and he is forever. He will never, never completely die. But those that do not receive Christ as Lord and Savior will die forever and ever if you don't receive him this woman was instructed clearly what not to do and she did it anyway and how many of you are living in a sense where you know that the gospel has been preached and you're living in sin anyway you need to turn from what you're doing and get right with God just because Jesus said, I forgive, doesn't mean that you can go back out in the world of sin. Uh, uh, just like Lot looked back, you may be taken away instantly, just like that. With a heart attack, a car crash, or a plane crash. You say, well, 
I don't ride a plane very much. We ride in the plane path and don't get frightened about it. Uh, not once never hit us yet. But the thing of it is, it could happen just like that, couldn't it? You don't have any promise of tomorrow. You need to be paid up, prayed up, and ready to go up. You need to have your life intact with Jesus Christ. And this is what uh, he was saying that day. Remember Lot's wife. How that she wasn't prepared or she looked back and she should have been looking forward. Which way are you looking today? Are you looking in the right direction? Are you looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? Are you standing firm with him? Are you uh, thinking about the world that you used to live in? Where you were uh, drinking, carousing, whatever you might have been doing that's in the world. The world is tough. It will entice you back. And it will pull you back. It will touch your heart strings and make you want to go back. But let me tell you, friend, Jesus is the uh, precious uh, Savior that has given his life for you. And you can live in him. And there's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost if you'll be in Jesus Christ. He said, don't look back like Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Remember those that have been destroyed. There's a lot of people that have been destroyed in wars and other things, friend. But they look back. Don't look back. Let's look forward. Whosoever uh, seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. In other words, we've got to surrender to Jesus Christ and lose our life in him and put our whole heart, our whole soul in him. I bless the Lord today. Give him grace and strength. God told righteous Abraham, they're going to be destroyed. And he prayed, no doubt. And God gives saints today. I remember God waking me up at night and having me pray for certain people. Uh, and uh, praise God that I did. I found out one long time ago that they was in a terrible car accident. They broke both arms at the same time when they were thrown over a cliff. But uh, I prayed that night. That person, I never did tell them that I prayed almost all night for them. It, it wasn't for me to tell. God woke me up and told me that they was in trouble. And I prayed. And some of you may be in trouble today. And you better be on your knees praying and looking ahead and not looking back. Because the world will entice you. It'll pull you just like it pulled Noah's wife. Or Lot's wife. Noah's wife might have been in trouble too for all I know. But she, she didn't lose it. But uh, I just realized that's what I said. But remember Lot's wife. And don't look back. Keep your high eyes on Jesus. And when you begin to think about the, the grace of God. Uh, have you read the book of Revelations lately? Um, all the wonderful things that are going to happen in the new world. Praise God. And a lot of people are trying to preserve this planet. Let me tell you, you can forget that. It's going to burn. You, uh, nothing you, uh, are you saving those, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, footprints, what is it? Somebody. Carbon, Carbon footprint. Ain't going to help a bit. It's going to burn, baby. It'll burn. You're not going to save it. Anything you do is not going to save you. The only person who can save it is Jesus. And he is coming again because of the wickedness of this world. Uh, th there's a statement come from this act that happened over there. Uh, it's been through uh, uh, the world, and you've probably heard it before. Uh, I got Jude down on something. It comes from this phrase where Abraham talked to God. And he kept asking him if 50, 40, and came down to 10. And God couldn't find 10. <coughs> he, tried, he Jewed the Lord down to 10 points. When you pray, you see it makes a difference, doesn't it? When you talk to God, look what a difference it made. Uh, God agreed with uh, uh, Abraham that he would save that whole place if he could just find 10 righteous people. But they weren't there. The only four that were headed out was Lot and his wife and two uh, girls, two of their children. And they headed out as they were moving forward. Lot's wife looked back. Don't look back. Let's look forward to the gr grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. He is a mighty God. Praise God. I, I, I'm remorse. I didn't put uh, up here uh, the uh, recount from last week. Brother uh, Greg Myers came last week and spoke. He did a great job, and I'm, praise God, he talked about Lot uh, uh, losing, David losing his whole family. 
You remember the story? Many of you know the story. Uh, they uh, uh, had been off fighting, and they came back, and the enemy had come in and taken his whole army's family, David's family and all the soldiers' family, and taken them away. And David was uh, just uh, beside himself, and he went to pray. He said, Lord, should we pursue? And the Lord told him, said, you'll recover all. Praise God. And Brother Myers uh, encouraged us that if you've lost something, you can recover. God can recover it for you. Da David prayed. God said, go after them, and, and you will recover all. Uh, 200 soldiers went back on him. He only had uh, 600. Four, uh, 200 of them had to stop because they were just worn out. But they made it anyway and retrieved everything. Everything. It, it, he overcome the enemy. It, illustration is good for us today. In our, in our life, we lose a lot of things, but let me encourage you, God can restore everything you need. Matt, Matthew 19 and 26, with God, all things are possible. Uh, remember that. Everything we need, God has, and he can take care of it. Uh, uh, can restore. Matthew, uh, I've quoted that already to you. This is a New Testament answer for all our needs. Jesus is there for you. And that's what Brother Greg talked about. Well, let me encourage you today. Jesus Christ is all we need. With, uh, he told us to remember Lot's wife. We have everything we need in Jesus. We have restoration in him if we'll believe and uh, touch his, his life. Praise God. Uh, your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's wicked. He's notorious for all that he does. He'll lie to you. And you see, a lot of people think that the devil's in hell. He's not in hell. It's made for him and for his cohorts, but he's not there now. He is the prince and power of the air. A lot of people don't know that. Some of, the, some of those telephone calls that wake you up in the night, maybe the devil trying to get a hold of you. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it disturbs your sleep. He'll do more than that. He'll lie to you. He'll tell you your wife is bad. He'll tell you your husband bad. He'll tell you your children are uh, terrible. They're going to go to hell. He's a liar. He is the father of lies. And we need to be aware that he is after you. Everybody sitting here today, because you're here, Satan's mad. He's mad at you and he's mad at everybody else that loves the Lord. And he don't want you to be where you can hear the truth. You need to uh, click over into the book of Revelation and find out who's going to make it and who's not. In the uh, 21st chapter of Revelation and the 8th verse, I believe I got it marked off here. These people in Sodom and Gomorrah were like this, my friend. He said, verse 8 says, but the cowardly in, in the uh, King James Version, it says, but the, uh, the fearful, uh, the unbelieving, the abominable murderers, uh, sexually immoral, sorcerers, people that believe in uh, worshiping demons and the devil, idolaters, anyone that's got a, a false god, they're idolaters. And all liars, look at that, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. People don't think anything about telling a lie today, even on public television otherwise. They're, they're going to meet their maker one day. Liars tells us right here in the book of Revelation, they're going to make their appointment with God. And it could come as instantly as Lot's wife turning around and she became instantly a pillar of salt. God don't do that to everybody, but there is a judgment day coming. It's on its way. You better be ready. Has, are your sins under the blood? Are they cast uh, as far as the east is from the west? Let's believe God for his great grace and love. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, in the 27th verse of that uh, 21st chapter says, but there shall be no means, uh, anyone that enters in that's defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. 
but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's who's going to heaven. Is your name written there? Are you confident in Jesus Christ? He's coming again, and he will uh, save the lost if you'll ask his blessings. Set your eyes heavenward, not on things of this earth. It's because this earth's going to leave you. Here in Florida, hey, you might wake up 30 foot down or 150 foot down with a sinkhole. You never know. It could happen. Lots of people have found that. But the thing is, we need to be ready to go now. Ready to make heaven our home. My eyes are set on Jesus, and I want to keep them there, don't you? Let's look straight ahead. Uh, now, we don't have horses going by every day like years ago, but do you know why they put blinders on, horses on their uh, equipment? They put a, a blinder on each side of their head. Because a horse sees things, I think it is 20% bigger than what they are. Their eyes are different than ours. And if a little rabbit or a cat runs out there, to him it's as like knee high like a big dog. They get frightened and they'll jump and sometimes jump out of the harness. We need blinders today for some of the worldly things that are going on. We need to keep our eyes straight. That's why they put the blinders on the horse, so they'll look straight ahead. Let's do what Jesus said. Remember Lot's wife and forget this world. It's going to sink and it's going to destroy us if we don't look to Jesus. Keep your eyes upon Jesus the Savior. Let's believe God. Set your eyes for him. Think about where he is. He's reigning at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for you. Everything you need is in him today. All that you need comes through him. Amen? By his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we have looked at the words of our Lord Jesus. He encourages us to remember Lot's wife. She looked back and was destroyed. Father, we know that you could do that to any of us any day. And Jesus, you reminded that generation, and we remind today what you have said. We speak, O oh God, concerning the things around about us. Build us up in the Holy Spirit. Help us, O oh God, to keep our minds and our eyes set. Because the world is a drawing factor. There is enticement of all kinds. Entertainment, foods, and terrible things. Dear God, we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of their excess food, their excess uh, all, all sorts of excess in their lives and, and lying and gambling and cheating and stealing and filth of all sorts. They were abominable in your sight and you destroyed them. Help us, God, that we may draw near you and live close to you in these last days. We ask your blessings in Jesus, our Lord's name. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed a moment. Is there anyone that needs to come to the altar and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Would you just slip up your hand right quick and say, I need Jesus. Is everyone safe in Jesus today? Is there anyone who needs him? God bless you. Would you stand with me right now? Praise God. We're not going to be dismissed right at the moment, but God has need of you to surrender your life to him. Remember the scriptures and depend on him every day. I encourage you, you can see the world is going astray. Second Thessalonians 2 uh, and 2 says, The people that had heard the gospel and they turned their ears away, they'd be turned to terribleness. They'd be turned over almost to a reprobate mind. The scriptures identify that in First Thessalonians, that People that have rejected the gospel, God will allow them to believe a lie. Lots of this world has rejected the gospel. It's been on television. It's been in almost every community. It has numerous churches, and the gospel's been preached. But they've turned aside, and they listened to lies. 
and they're not going to make heaven their home unless they change. Pray that they change, amen, and draw closer to God. Jesus loves us. God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus if we'll depend on him. God bless you today. Let's strengthen our hearts and lives in faith, believing God. What a service today. Well, you didn't get your ears tickled this morning. <laughs> if you have to look that one up, you might have to go home and look that up. But that was a hard-hitting service, hard-hitting message this morning, Pastor. Very truthful. Yes. The Bible lays it out. That's who's going to go to heaven. Revelations 21, verse 8. Like I said, it wasn't a tickle your ear service. That's not the kind of pastor we have. And we love him very much. He brings God's word very truthfully. Bless you for being here. Psalms 19 and verse 14. We say this in unison at the end of every service. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. It will be July 7th, 8th, 7th. It'll be July 7th, right? Okay. So we'll have communion next Sunday. Lord willing. Lord willing, we're going to have communion next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Thank you to all your visitors who came, um, who came back from last Sunday. If you have somebody, uh, just somebody, if God lays somebody on your heart. Sandy White will be here. Go back to that one there, Joe. Thank you very much for putting that one up. August 11th, mark your calendars for this. Um, she was here last Sunday. She's actually a minister. She has a ministry where she goes around and speaks. So she, many Sundays, um, that's what she's doing on Sundays. She's speaking at different churches. But she ministers. Um, she has a great, um, we, we watched her testimony uh, this earlier this week. But uh, mark your calendars for that. Try it. Really try to be here. That's a good one. Okay, Psalms 19 and verse 14. Wednesday night we will have Bible study here at the church. Bible study. We are studying the Bible. Um, come on out. We have classes for all ages. And the uh, Spanish will be here in the sanctuary. And um, we'll do that. Psalms 19 and verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Try and say this several times to yourself. Say it to your spouse. Say it to a loved one. Keep it on your mind. God bless you. Go be a blessing to someone. Bring somebody with you next Sunday.